So what I have here is an LD11R, which translates to a 1966 Johnson 5 horsepower outboard. Now it is a long shaft, and that's where that extra L in the uh, model number comes from. Um, I've had this thing for many, many years. I got it, I think I've purchased a lot of outboards, like a lot, not a lot of outboards. Um, here from some guy down in Seal Beach. This was included inside of it. Um, it's pretty old, so not many people wanted it, especially at the time. Um, so I just kind of hung on to it, and I've had it for many years, thinking it's it's really nice. One day I'll, I might have a need for it and fix it up and do something with it. But again, it's it's a long shaft, and I ain't got no boats in the long shaft, so I, here it is just sitting here still. So I figured I would do some comparisons between a 4 and a 6 horsepower, since this is the odd child between the two. Um, and show you what I find most interesting about it. So it uses the same um, 360 degree rotatability as its you know, 2 and 4 horsepower counterparts. So that's kind of neat. Um, exhaust housing is a little bit beefier than you'd find on a 4 horse. Four horse, you usually just have two holes in the top and bottom. This has four, so a little stronger there. Um, otherwise, the stern brackets are pretty much identical. Uh, let's tilt it up here and look at the lower unit. So, there's two types of four horses a four horse standard drive and a four horse weedless drive. Uh, weedless drive uses these four bolts. Let's see the four screws, bolts holding the lower unit on. So, they're a little bit beefier, and the little 5 horse shares that same bolt pattern. So, part of me thinks that uh, this is more of a weedless drive exhaust housing than it is a 4 horsepower exhaust housing. But I don't have weedless drive 4 horse to compare it to, so we just gotta guess. Um, it's pretty much all that's going on on the bottom end. This is a uh, 3 buried propeller. What is this? A uh, 8 by 7.5. So, not really a bad size. And uh, you can't see, but you know, if you're judging it by the paint of the propeller, this this is one low hour engine, so that's kind of neat. But let me uh, show you the four horse. The four horse, I, uh, this is the one I fixed up in a video a while ago, so you can kind of see the same rotating, similar design in the exhaust housing. Um, same little uh, four exhaust relief holes there as that one has. So kind of interesting. Um, if we look underneath, it has this little square plate that attaches to the uh, lower cowling here. That's kind of its version of a powerhead adapter. Five horse, we have that same little square plate. So chances are I could take this entire powerhead cowling and all and put it onto here. I don't know if the drive shaft's the same, they're probably not. Well, in fact, I know they're not. But anyway, so in theory you could bolt it all on there, aside from the drive shaft, and probably make a... Uh, four horsepower head with a five horsepower body. So that's kind of neat, but anyway, it has another power head adapter to go to this lower cowling, so you kind of, kind of odd. The reason they did that is because it shares a similar pan to a six horsepower. Now this hood on the six horsepower is a completely different shape than our five horsepower here, but they went to that weird shape with the, uh, the swooping down instead of the flat, and then they went back in the, uh, you know, years later to a more traditional design such as they originally started with. So, for the most part, it does share a six horsepower lower pan, as I can put a six horsepower hood straight on. No reason for me to spend the time to fit it on there, and you get the idea. So let me show you the uh, differences between the five and the six. Here with a six horsepower outboard and you look under here and you're like, oh, that's, that's a six horse. Until you start really looking and then you start noticing a bunch of little differences. So we have this handle off here to the side, which is the throttle. So on this, we have a rod that comes out through and up and that controls the throttle can. On the six horse, we have a tiller handle, which throttles on that. So it uses a kind of a different setup. But what's interesting there is the provisions are there for the tiller handle and even on the bottom cowling here. See that knockout? That's where the uh, little grommet would go for the uh, throttle on the six. Let me go show it to you. See what I mean? So, in theory, you know, you, well, 
you can't swap out the bottom and put a tiller handle on there because that is your power head adapter. But I don't know, it's kind of interesting. The uh, the remote's a little starter there. That's that's pretty much identical to the uh, the six horse also. Now this one's a little newer, so you have more plasticky stuff. But you know, it's it's the same kind of starter setup. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but our six horsepower hood here even has provisions for that throttle lever. So kind of interesting. Your six horsepowers always have this empty screw, which doesn't do anything. It just kind of sits there. On a six horse, I've never seen anything being used in the screw hole. But if you look at a five horse, there it is. You have a little tiny, um, I don't know what this thing's called, a little arm lever to give you some tension for the uh, uh, rotating magneto system or ignition system with a little spring. So the provisions are still there even up until the late 70s on the six horsepower for the five horsepower stuff. So that's that's kind of interesting that I could probably take a uh, you know newer six horsepower power head and slap it right onto the five horsepower body. It'd probably work fine. And uh, comparing the carburetors, they're they're pretty identical too. I really don't think there is a difference. It really seems like a five horsepower is just a six horsepower top of the four horsepower bottom, and bam, five horse. Because checking part number is the um, Cylinder head, that's the same. Exhaust housing is the same. The exhaust housing, the, uh, not the exhaust housing, the uh, crankcase, it's the same. Intake manifold, probably the same. Carburetor, yeah, it looks identical, but I didn't check part numbers on that, honestly. So, yeah, all in all, it's, it's very, very similar. So this is a 1977, 78, I don't remember, power head. Um, it's got the CD ignition stuff, so I figure if I ever... Uh, do another six horsepower project, I'll use the CD stuff on it. Maybe. Or if I ever fix up the little five horse here, I'll probably just put that power head on there, since you know, just bolt it on and go, and uh, have myself CD ignition in 1966 engine. Kind of neat. But, anywho, so one of the reasons why you only really see me working on Johnson and is because a lot of what I do is just play around with these things. And the interchangeability of parts is just phenomenal. I mean, like literally 1966, 1976, and pretty much anything in the power had to probably swap right over. So it's that's it's really neat and really handy, especially when parts are, you know, expensive, hard to come by, whatever it is, and you can grab them off any small little motor. So, kind of neat. I remember this engine. Um, the guy wanted to uh, fix it up. So he went ahead and rebuilt the carburetor, and then it never ran again. Um, that's when he noticed this. See this hole? Yeah, there's supposed to be a plug there, and uh, I don't think he knew that he needed a plug there or needed to put it back or whatever it is. So I'm kind of wondering what's going on on the inside of this thing, if it's even got a float in it. Probably not, honestly, but I don't know. So uh, kind of the death of this motor kind of came from the guy trying to fix it. And the same thing with the lower here. Um, those those bolts were kind of loose when I got it, so I decided to drop it to see what I was looking at. Uh, I saw a strip screw on the water pump, and it looks like that's where he gave up. But the biggest problem was it being a six horsepower, it uses a lower crankshaft uh, seal. Let me show it to you. So basically, what happens is there is a uh, a little cork gasket that goes around here, followed by a little uh, black part with a little uh, o-ring inside, which kind of forces over that, and that kind of makes your um, lower crank uh, lower crankcase seal. And there's a spring inside here that retains tension. My pretty important piece, and when I took this lower off to look at it, all of that was missing. So even if the guy did fix the carburetor correctly, it probably never would have ran right because of all the missing parts at the bottom. So kind of a shame, but. Otherwise, this thing is, aside from that, what is this thing? A lawnmower? Yeah, probably. It just says start. Anyway, aside from the uh, carburetor and lower unit, this, this thing is really nice, nice condition. But again, I, I've never, never had a use for it at all. Like, I figured I'd hang on to it. Maybe someday I'll find another one with a... Uh, yeah, short shaft, and then I'll have one, you know, 
put a little usable motor, at least for what I do. It just never happened. I've uh, This is the only one of these I've ever had, and the second one I've ever seen. So I don't know how many were made, I don't know how many are still left out there. Probably a bunch, honestly. But, as you can see, it looks great as a six horse. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, there, I just converted it to a six horse. Well, anyway, um, if you have one of these, enjoy it. And yeah, that's that's all I really have. Hope you uh, hope you enjoyed this comparison.